Welding in space, a fascinated topic for everyone. But does it so easy? Let's watch and know in this video. But first, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more interesting videos. If you like the video, hit the like button and share it. Thank you. So what are the challenges in space? We know space is a real vacuum. A microgravity area. At first second in space. Almost instantly your blood bubbles, your skin begins to freeze, the air is pulled from your lungs. After five seconds. With each passing moment your cells are bombarded with photons and particles that cause dangerous mutations. After 10 seconds. Your body begins to expand as you rapidly decompress. After 30 seconds. There's no oxygen left in your tissue. Your entire circulatory system has failed. After 31 seconds, you're dead. The first spark in space is made by Russians, not the Americans. The only real tests of in-space welding techniques using conventional approaches occurred during the Soviet tests. On Soyuz 6 flight in 1969, Kubasov used a cylinder inside the unpressurized orbital craft, called the Vulcan facility, which he was able to control remotely to shield the crew from the possible unknown dangers of welding in space. He tried out three different welding methods via an electron gun. First was an electron beam welding. This process sends electrons at a very high velocity to the specific areas of the contact surfaces of the metals for joining. Second was, low-pressure plasma arc welding. The plasma arc process is constricted. It requires a water-cooled spray nozzle to restrict the arc to get the properties necessary for welding. And, third was, consumable electrode welding. This is another form of arc welding that uses a consumable electrode. The device was equipped with a low-pressure arc welder using a consumable electrode, a low-pressure arc, and hollow cathode, and an electron beam welder. However, the Russian crew overestimated their skills and underestimated the risks. During the test, Kubasov almost burned through the hull of the Soyuz 6 a living compartment, a mistake that would have hurled the pair into space without spacesuits to face the final 30 seconds of their lives. Fortunately, the hull remained intact, but with a warning about the harshness and complexity of welding in space. The weld quality of the titanium, aluminum alloy, and stainless steel samples was comparable to that found on Earth. So where is NASA in all this? Nowadays, NASA employs a number of innovative welding techniques that enable spacecraft to withstand the rigors of space travel while also allowing for some repairs to be conducted in space. They are. First is, friction stir welding. Friction stir welding is a technique that uses frictional heating with forging pressure to produce high-strength bonds essentially free of defects. A rotating pin tool softens, stirs, and forges a bond between two metal plates to form a welded joint. NASA has developed a brand new design for a friction stir welding tool. Second is ultrasonic stir welding. Another NASA developed weld process, ultrasonic stir welding, uses a stir rod to stir the plasticized abutting surfaces of two metallic alloy pieces to form the weld joint. Heat is generated by an induction coil. The ultrasonic energy reduces unwanted forces, increases travel rates and lessens wear on the stir rod. Third is handheld laser. For small welding jobs, especially in tight spaces, NASA developed a handheld laser. It's useful due to its precision, ability, and maneuverability. This tool was originally developed to repair parts of the shuttle engine but has since been licensed by NASA to be used in many other industrial processes. 